All right, then. This is Discover the Word, The Broken Away 2. Hey, Ann. Hmm. You're a lot like Elisa. You scare me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, I guess. I'm, I'm not the only one, Mark. <laughs> Great. What's scary about her? Or me? <laughs> I, I have such mixed feelings. You know, the Broken Way, right? That's mm. the name of your book yeah. that we started talking about in our last conversation. Mm -hmm. Elisa, you've, mm. you've led us in some conversations. Mm. You've written on the subject. Mm -hmm. And as part of me, Bill, you know, part of me says there's some subjects you kind of have to come in sideways, you know, mm -hmm. so you yeah. don't scare people off. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and not only that, but uh, sometimes vulnerability mm. can be very um, mm. uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and mm -hmm. the degree to which we've experienced Elisa's mm -hmm. willingness to be vulnerable, and now we're experiencing it with mm -hmm. you, Anne. Uh, for those of us who spend a lot of our lives trying to hide our Mm. Uh, brokenness. Mm. It's not always the easiest thing to see somebody. Mm. And, and you know, I think it's not always that we're trying to hide it as much as we're just trying to stay on top of it. Mm. Mm. And okay. let not let it control yeah. us. Mm. Yeah. And yet our vulnerability has mm. an amazing winsomeness with each mm. other. And as we've discovered, mm. you know, Martin, Bill and myself, when we're vulnerable together, something beautiful breaks mm. open. And mm. so, and we're so glad that you're with us mm. yeah. really to take us Maybe to a few new places in this topic of brokenness. Yeah, I think um, I try to see brokenness as um, a seed. I'm a farmer's wife. <laughs> I was. I'm what a kind farmer's. Of far what kind of farm? Yeah, we have um, we have 800 acres of corn, wheat, and soybeans. We have 650 sows and a thousand little baby piglets out in the barn all the time. Yeah, well, that is a big time farm. <laughs> we a are, and, and I am piglets. a farmer's daughter. Mm. My um. Mm. My family goes back seven generations of farmers, and my husband, as far back as they go, they've been farmers. So I get seeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, cover the broken way. You've got that that handful of wheat seeds, and I really see brokenness as a seed that if we're if we're willing to be vulnerable, if we're willing to be broken open, it's like a seed that that falls into the earth, <laughs> and and life comes forth out of that. I really believe that a yielded life. Surrender to God. A yielded life yields the most. And really the, the verse that I've been camping on, mm. <laughs> living in and, and want to um want it to shape me in deep, profound ways. It, it comes from John. John twelve, twenty four. I said John who but <laughs> <laughs> John twelve, twenty four. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Mm -hmm. And as a farmer's wife, I understand that. You, it, it looks like the wheat has died. It's harvested. And we take that seed next year, plant it into the earth. And it looks like when a seed, it looks like it's, if you didn't understand better, that seed being broken looks like destruction. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's being destroyed as it breaks in the earth, but actually that's an embryo of new life that comes forth and will produce far more than just that one seed. So I think if, if we're willing to be broken and given, if we're willing to be vulnerable and have our hearts broken open. Who is though? I mean, I, uh, yeah. who is, who well, is Jesus willing? was. He was, and that's what uh, we want our lives yeah. to. Eventually. Yeah, and, well, and, and not an easy process for him, not no. one that he stepped into without being even honest mm -hmm. about the painfulness yeah. of that. And I think I think lots of times you're right. We're not really willing, but the Lord brings circumstances mm -hmm. into our lives. It does break us open. Does, don't we spend most of our days and nights fighting Oh, that constantly. Brokenness. Trying to avoid it. Trying yeah. to avoid no, it. Planning, Always. planning to avoid it. And, and we call that wisdom. That's right. <laughs> but yeah. I think, Absolutely. But that's I think right. lots of times yeah. out in call, that's and that's great. really what I want. It's one of the main takeaways I want from the broken way is that culture, society constantly is telling you avoid suffering. Mm hmm Mask it, escape it, numb it, do whatever you need to avoid suffering. We look at scripture and Jesus does the exact opposite. Okay, he, what would you say though to Bill when he said, yeah, but it's wisdom to try to avoid it? It depends. There's, I believe there's bad brokenness in the world. And I talk about that in the broken way. There's bad brokenness that you do want to avoid, that it is wisdom. Like, like that anything that's going to go ahead and inhibits flourishing that, that God would want. There's deep sin. That, that's 
bad brokenness. You're not going to step into places that are that are like addictions, crime, the, crime. Mm-hmm. Like that's bad brokenness mm-hmm. because you know it's not what God intended. It's not shalom. It's not what the purpose is in the will of God. That's bad brokenness. That's wisdom to avoid that. But then there's what I say in the book, good brokenness. That's the brokenness and givenness, the brokenness of humility, the brokenness of vulnerability, the brokenness of generosity. So as I say in the broken... the brokenness you can't avoid? And the brokenness you can't avoid, that God is bringing into your life to shape you and remake you to be more like Jesus. So I say in the book, bad brokenness is broken by good brokenness. So there is bad brokenness that Wait, God say that a different way the, uh, sinfulness is broken by surrender mm. sinfulness is broken by people who are willing to be surrendered broken and given out into a sinful world so bad brokenness is the brokenness you do mm-hmm. want to avoid all through scripture God's telling you to avoid all these sins that's bad brokenness but he's also calling you to be broken and given into the world to live surrendered knee bowed to his sovereign will so I think we're, we're called to good brokenness to go out into the world to break bad brokenness and you're talking about the the, the seed the <laughs> lesson in nature and uh-huh. I am Yes. Totally not a country girl. I'm an urban girl. I'm going, well, how are you talking about it? I don't know if you've even seen a wheat seed before well, in my whole life. I was going to ask you if, you if you knew what a seed actually was. <laughs> but but I, I, I think yeah. what you're saying yeah. and what the picture that's coming yeah. to my mind is this this seed, which is tiny yes. from a, a kernel of yeah. wheat. I've seen yes. those in the movies. Yes. Okay, so it, it <laughs> breaks. I've seen those in the movies. <laughs> I love it, it so much. It, it breaks <laughs> open. It, it cracks does. open. It cracks and, and looks like destruction. And then new life actually comes out of that place. Because it's, you water it. You know, the, the sky breaks open. Is that like a miracle? <laughs> it is. It is. Out of this, something that looks like destruction, it's this metaphor of resurrection. Mm. New life, this little green shoot that comes forth and breaks up through the soil, breaks up through the earth, comes forth. It just looks like this little shoot of grass that will become a wheat stalk that will grow into a head with all of these kernels, hundreds of kernels out of that one kernel. So I think society mm. tells us avoid suffering suffering not being sinfulness but suffering that god brings into your life suffering that he's going using to refine you and shape you to be more like jesus avoid that suffering but if you if you will be die to self be broken and given out of that yielded place your life will yield the most well the counterintuitiveness it is is, uh, (laughs) it is and i think it's really in the john 12 text yeah the hours come for the son of man to be glorified Uh uh-huh well, he's talking about the cross. He is. And when you look at the cross, glory doesn't necessarily come to your first thought. It's true. I mean, you think about the agony and the suffering and the pain. Now, we know glory was on the other end of it somewhere. Uh-huh. But, uh-huh. boy, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, mm-hmm. we don't think of that as him being glorified. So what do we make of it? Yeah, I I think it's again, as we talked about in yesterday's conversation, I think it's a part of this upside down thing that we really wrestle with because we like things to be right side up, right side up to culture's way of thinking. But God's way of thinking is right side up is what looks like a cross, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. what looks crucified. I've got my notes from sitting in um, Jerusalem with our teacher (laughs) looking at that verse. He was a messianic um, rabbi. And he looked at that verse, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And I've got my notes, glorified equals crucified. If mm-hmm. I want God to be glorified in my life, how do I live dying to self? How do I live crucified to self? How do I live like this seed that dies to self and falls to the earth so much more can yield out of my life? Mm-hmm. This is a, a radical embrace of broken Mm -hmm. Um, rather than we talked about this as we started Mm -hmm. our conversation rather than hiding our broken Mm -hmm. or avoiding our broken we embrace broken we watch for it and and it's it's not broken that's sinfulness (laughs) it's the brokenness that happens from living in a broken world that we're surrendering that to god that he's going to use that to shape me to be more like jesus i think I think so much dysfunction in the world, in our own personal lives, in the church, our communities, comes from 
denying brokenness, Mm -hmm. hiding from brokenness, that if we can turn and face brokenness, then we can allow Christ to enter that place and start to redeem it and create resurrection out of that place if we don't try to run away from it. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that's what Paul was doing, in a sense, in 2 Corinthians 12 as he was wrestling with whatever the thorn in the flesh was? That's right. And and he keeps praying for God to take it away, and God says, nope, Mm -hmm. you're never going to get there unless it's through this. Mm-hmm. I remember reading in the broken way that your husband, you call him the farmer, farmer. I love that, um, <laughs> told you never be afraid, afraid of a broken, broken thing. thing. And I just, it, it repeats over and over mm-hmm. through the broken way. And I still, it's my one line from the broken way that I say over and over and over again. Do not be afraid of broken things. Christ is redeeming everything. Do not mm-hmm. be afraid of broken things. This is how Christ is resurrecting things. I think um, Daryl says, I, I write about it in the broken way. You know, everything all across this farm says the same thing. You know that, right? The seed breaks to give us the wheat. The soil breaks to give us the crop. The sky breaks to give us the rain. The wheat breaks to give us the bread. And the bread breaks to give us the feast. There was once even an alabaster jar that broke to give him all the glory. Never be afraid of being a broken thing. Mm -hmm. And in the places of brokenness, I mean, Paul talks about it. When I am the weakest, Christ gets to be the strongest in me. If we're not afraid of broken places, Christ can enter that broken place, be glorified. Like it says, the Son of Man, that's his hour to be crucified. Out of the the places that look like crucifixions, that look like death, God can get the glory in those places. What if somebody says, but I am afraid of it? (laughs) I get it. (laughs) I am so with you. I understand. Can I go ahead and trust God enough? Can I, I guess it, lots of times we believe in the cross, but do I believe in resurrections? Do I trust that abundance, that's the that's subtitle of the book, A Daring Path into the Abundant Life. Can I trust that out of places that look like deaths, there is resurrection, there is abundance. You are going to feel afraid. Mm. You are going to feel afraid. And I feel afraid all of the time. But maybe do it scared. We do it scared. And I think <laughs> yeah. sometimes, sometimes yeah. a life of faith feels like fear. Because you're stepping out of your own comfort zone. But out of your own comfort zone, you experience the comfort of God, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. So it may feel like fear, but that step of trusting God in those broken places, that's a life of faith.